Welcome back to the Demon Slayer Gamer Channel. We're going to be continuing our Final Fantasy XIV Dungeon Guide series today. And we're going to be taking a look at the Trial Dungeon Cinder Drift. In this trial, you'll be going against Ruby Weapon. If this video helps you out at all. Please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, as it does help me out as a creator. When Ruby Weapon casts Stamp, this is going to be his Tank Buster that you'll just want to pop a cooldown to help reduce some of the damage. Optimize Ultima will be party-wide damage that just has to be healed through. And he teleports to the center of the platform and casts Flex the Claw. There is one of two different mechanics that can happen. If he sends out fissures that will explode at their endpoints, along with doing a circular AoE after. If he casts liquefaction, this will cause the rest of the floor other than the fissures to begin sucking you down into them. You'll need to stand on top of the fissures to prevent yourself from being instantly killed. Ruby Ray is a large line AoE that you'll just want to move to the opposite side of him so that you're not in front. Optimize Ultima again will be his party-wide damage that needs to be healed through. When he teleports to the center of the platform again and casts Flexiclaw one more time. This time it will send out three circular patterns that will cause circular AoEs to follow them. So you'll want to stand in between the circular patterns and move in towards the middle after the initial explosion happens. He'll then do high powered homing lasers, which will do two different group up AoEs. So you'll want to split the party and divide these. So you have four people in each group. When he casts Raven's Flight, he will zoom across the platform multiple times in a set pattern. You'll want to see where the first few AoEs are happening and then position yourself towards the outside so that you can move into the opening after the first few occur. After this, it is better to move Ruby Weapon towards the center of the platform so that the melee in your group can hit their positionals appropriately. He'll do a stamp followed by homing lasers. He'll then run to one side of the platform and cast Ruby Dynamics. You'll need to get as close to the boss as possible. Then the homing lasers will show their AoE on every party member that you'll just need to spread out to avoid overlapping these before casting another optimized Ultima. He'll teleport back to the center of the platform, casting another Flexiclaw, so you'll need to pay attention as to which of the two are occurring. If you get the fissures like we did, then you'll want to position yourself away from the boss and the ends of each of the fissures. And if he casts Undermine after this, this will cause AoEs to occur along the entire fissures, so you'll want to make sure you're not standing near them. Follow this up with another Ruby Ray, so you'll want to move to his sides or behind him again. for another optimized Ultima. He 
and then once again teleport to the center, cast in Flexiclaw one more time. If you get the Fishers or the line patterns, you'll want to position accordingly to dodge the mechanic. For casting another high powered homing lasers. These lasers are usually centered on the healers. After you deplete Ruby Weapon's HP, there will be a transition phase before phase 2. Once phase 2 begins, aggro will reset, so tanks will need to pick it up quickly before she starts hitting through other party members. At the beginning of the fight, she'll cast Meteor Project, which will summon the Dalamod. That will begin to crash into the background, causing party-wide damage. She'll then cast a negative Persona, which will summon two Raven's Images onto the platform. Tanks will want to pick them up and keep them separated. Both of these have multi-hit tank buster abilities that you will definitely want to use a cooldown on as they hit quite hard. While this is occurring, there will be circular AoEs under certain party members that you'll want to just move away from the rest of the group so you don't hit multiple people. And she casts Meteor Stream. This will do several circular AoEs on other par party members that just want to spread out. After the two adds are dead, then you'll be able to damage the Ruby weapon one more time. She'll then cast Magitech Meteor, followed by Magitech Comet. The Comets will fall right away, then you'll just want to position yourself in between them to avoid being too close to them and taking a lot of damage from their landing. You'll then want to get behind them so that the damage from the Meteor is extremely reduced. She'll then cast Mark II Magitech Comet, which will summon four moving indicators on the ground. You'll want two tanks and two DPS to stand under them in their final locations so that you can catch the Comet. While you are catching the Comet, you will take continuous damage so your healers will need to keep you alive. The remaining DPS will want to focus down the Comets and destroy them as quick as possible. While this is happening, she'll also do line AoEs across the platform that you'll just want to move out of. When the second Dalamun hits, then you'll just need to heal through the damage from this. Out 
Outrage will be party-wide damage that just needs to be healed through. She'll spam this ability multiple times in a row. Meteor Stream will be four circular AoEs that you'll just want to spread out to avoid overlapping. And this should be it for the Sender Drift. I hope this helped everyone out, and if it did, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will catch you on the next one.